Hello children, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well this week. Today we're going to revisit a channel we debunked a few months ago. That's right, this video caught my eye the other day so I had to make a video about it. We're going to be talking about creationism again. You know, that topic I started my channel for. Yeah, we'll be revisiting this topic a lot more in the coming few weeks. Anyway, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. In the beginning was matter, and matter begot the amoeba. If there is no God, that is the series of events that is forced on a person. Why do you guys always have to say amoeba? Why not say something more accurate like single-celled organisms or early prokaryotes or something? That would be way better than giving the name of a modern organisms that would somewhat look like the first living creatures. You see, you would have to suggest that the cosmos is all that there is, all that there was, or all that there ever will be. Even if that were true, what would be wrong with that? You would have to say that there's no intelligent supernatural creator who brings life into existence. And so you would have to say that somewhere in the distant past, life arose from non-living chemicals. That's actually not very hard to believe, considering that there have been numerous experiments that have demonstrated that essential biochemical molecules required for life can be created from inorganic material. Why is it that you guys have such a hard time accepting something like this? Was somehow an almighty being that created everything with the snap of his fingers is more believable? I guess at the end of the day, it depends on what you yourself see to be more or less likely. I can't seem to fully understand the minds of creationists. But from a scientific point of view, a god creating the entire universe is not exactly the most probabilistic idea. Now, there's a very serious scientific problem with this. It breaks one of the most fundamental biological laws known to humankind, the law of biogenesis. Ah, yes, when a creationist says that science contradicts science, you know things are about to get juicy. And it's not the first time they're doing this. Time and time again, creationists try to bring up other parts of science in an attempt to support their theory, such as the second law of thermodynamics or spontaneous generation. But every time it is done by completely misrepresenting what that particular law or theory states. But, you know, I'm going to give you a chance here. The law of biogenesis is very simple to understand. Bio means life. Genesis means beginning. The law of biogenesis simply says that... Life comes from previously existing life of its own kind in our material, natural world. That's actually not really the definition of biogenesis. First of all, it says nothing about kinds. Please stop using that. It's literally a pseudoscientific word that has no place in science. What biogenesis actually states, and is very simple, is that life comes from pre-existing life. That's it. It's one of the three branches of cell theory. But if you take this statement out of context, it's easy to misrepresent what it actually means. On the surface, just looking at it, you might think, oh, that is indeed against the idea of abiogenesis. However, if you dig deeper and understand it within its context, then you'd know that that's not the case. Biogenesis specifically refers to modern organisms, and specifically addresses it against spontaneous generation. Many centuries ago, in the 1600s, people thought that modern organisms came into existence from non-living material, such as times when their food were spoiled if not stored in proper conditions. Biogenesis was then coined to be a synonym for spontaneous generation. But after this was disproven by Louis Pasteur via his famous experiment proving that life does not arise from non-contaminated samples, spontaneous generation was disproven along with the idea of biogenesis. Biogenesis was then later redefined to be the opposite of what spontaneous generation offered, and that was that life came from pre-existing life, basically what Louis Pasteur demonstrated. And that is the context for the term biogenesis. It was defined specifically against spontaneous generation. Therefore, under this context, we know that it refers to modern organisms and addresses the concerns that people had during ancient Greek times, where mice would pop out out of nowhere or a mold growing on their food. A biogenesis, on the other hand, as you can tell from the name of A plus biogenesis, refers to life arising from non-life instead of pre-existing life, and specifically addresses the first life forms on Earth. However, if you look at these terms in context, they don't contradict at all. Biogenesis does not oppose the idea of the first life forms arising from non-living material. For years, people didn't think that that was the case, and so they naturally thought you could just get non-living chemicals to produce life. And they had examples for that. In fact, what they called scientific examples. They said, sure enough, if you will take a steak and place it on your kitchen counter in the middle of the summer, and come back in maybe a week or two. Do you know what you'll find? Oh, you'll find maggots that have spontaneously generated on that steak. And that was supposedly evidence of life coming from non-living chemicals. Literally, no one conducted an experiment like that and called it scientific. It was just based off observations from people with their food spoiled. An experiment that followed modern scientific methods would be similar to what Louis Pasteur did, where he controlled the environment and made sure that other living organisms were kept out. And yeah, that was actually done to disprove spontaneous generation. 
They said, that's not all. If you were to take some old sweaty rags and you were to wrap them with some wheat and put them in the corner of a barn and come back in a month or so, you would have spontaneously generated mice and sometimes rats from the chemical properties of the air and the rags and the wheat. The only thing you would have spontaneously generated is the stupidity of creationists. On second thought, it can't be generated if it already exists. Well, several scientists were studying this and they thought, hold on just a second, we're not sure that these chemical processes are bringing about life. And they did some experiments. One of them is by a man named Francisco Reddy or Francisco Reedy. You spell his name R-E-D-I. He simply took some meat, put it in a jar, several jars actually, and he put those jars to one side and he didn't cover them or put anything on top of the jars. The other group of jars, he put meat in the bottom of those and hermetically sealed, airtight, these jars on this side, and then he watched. And maggots formed on the uncovered meat. Maggots did not form on the covered meat. And so he said, I think flies are producing maggots. Yes, Reddy was indeed one of the first to challenge the idea of spontaneous generation. I let this clip play because I thought it was a good idea to expose everyone to his experiments. Needless to say, this was specifically addressing maggots coming from flies, but does not address other things that grow on spoiled food, such as mold. I don't know why I'm even leaving a comment here since I already debunked your argument earlier. Everything you are presenting here shows the context of biogenesis and spontaneous generation, which is separate and addresses a different topic than abiogenesis. In the mid-1860s, a man came along that you're probably very familiar with. Louis Pasteur proved once and for all that life doesn't spontaneously generate from non-living chemicals. Pasteur did some experiments where he would put meat broth or hay broth in the bottom of a flask and he would boil it. Those flasks had a special S-shaped curve so air could get back into the broth, but that special S shape was designed to catch all microscopic organisms as they went through the neck. Some of those flasks he would keep for over a year and then break the neck off. The air would go back unhindered to the meat broth and microscopic organisms would form. Ah yes, truly a genius for his time. Mad respect to what these scientists did for the sake of knowledge. Pasteur's experiment changed the way we thought about how microorganisms worked. It was well controlled and well thought out. Of course, these scientists aren't the only ones who contributed to disproving spontaneous generation. Lazzaro Spallanzani, an Italian biologist, proposed that microbes that grew in broth came from other microbes in the air. When he boiled some broth in an airtight flask, no microorganisms grew. He was an important person that eventually led up to Louis Pasteur's famous experiment. So yeah, many scientists contributed to the debunk of spontaneous generation. However, this is entirely different than abiogenesis, which requires relatively specific conditions over millions and billions of years, and describes early RNA-based ancient organisms instead of modern organisms. Alright, for brevity, I'm going to skip until he presents his next argument, since I've already addressed this one. Now that puts people who don't believe in God in a very serious quandary. If this material universe is all that there is, and all that there was, and all that there ever will be, and life somehow in the beginning came from non-living chemicals, and yet every single scientific experiment ever done in the biological sciences proves that can't be the case, then what's the alternative? There was a supernatural intelligent being at the beginning who brought life into existence. Ignoring that your argument is fundamentally flawed due to your lack of understanding of what biogenesis states, don't you see the major, major problem with your argument? If you're giving us the premise that life can only ever come from other life, that should be a rule that applies to your god too. The only way out of that is to say your god is an exception, in which case why wouldn't anything else, such as abiogenesis, also be a possible exception? If you're presenting that biogenesis is an absolute fact, you cannot then say that god can break this rule while nothing else can. I mean, the word abiogenesis is literally a biogenesis not biogenesis. It's a scientific field that addresses the idea of life coming from non-life. Why would you reject one field of science while accepting another so easily like this? Could it be? Have you been picking cherries at the orchard again? Now, what you'll hear from the atheistic evolutionary teaching is that we just haven't found how life came from non-living chemicals. We think it did. We suggest it had to. It's not that science hasn't found the answer yet. It's that science has found the answer, and the answer is that spontaneous generation is impossible 
in nature. <sighs> All right, I think it's time for me to go into a little bit more detail on the difference between spontaneous generation and abiogenesis. Like I said earlier, spontaneous generation describes modern organisms. It attempted to say that modern organisms can spontaneously come into existence. It was an idea that described food spoilages or mice invasion. Abiogenesis, on the other hand, talks about the first living organisms on Earth, and these are very, very different compared to modern ones. We're talking about RNA-based, single-celled, very, very simple prokaryotes, with minimal function and nothing else other than the ability to metabolize and replicate its genetic information. This is in no way, shape, or form similar to modern complex organisms that has all sorts of function and structure, designed with the capabilities to survive in its environment, compete with other organisms, utilize higher tertiary functions, etc. So that's the biggest difference. Secondly, there's also the specificity of time and conditions. Abiogenesis is trying to see how the first living organisms came into existence over a very specific set of conditions that were supposedly present during early Earth that formed over hundreds of millions of years. Evidently, this is completely different than what the scientists showed in experimentation to disprove spontaneous generation, where they left their flasks for days, weeks, or years. Although I can see the confusion between spontaneous generation and abiogenesis, it is important to understand how they are fundamentally different. One describes modern organisms, while one describes ancient organisms, under very different environments and conditions. Please never bring this up as an argument for God again. It's getting a bit old at this point. And that's the end of this video. Thank you to Fireshard once again for being the top patron. Got any interesting topics you would like me to cover? Be sure to tell me in the comment section below or on Discord. Thanks again for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.